A few people asked me how I made the monster movement in my game Save the Earth. So I decided to make this video to show you how it's done. And I think you'll be surprised just how easy it is to do. Okay, let's start with a basic scene. We're going to use some of the assets from my Save the Earth game. So it's very common in games to have the player be attacked by monsters. And in Save the Earth, I have these monsters that come from the sides and head towards the earth and, and attack it by running into it. So that's pretty common gameplay. Let's see if we can recreate that in gdevelop. Let's start by using this basic method. So uh, I'm actually going to create these objects using this first event, which creates monster and an earth planet. So I'll just delete these ones and we'll let the event create them. Now, the only thing that's the only logic that this game will have is this one action move the slow monster towards the Earth-like planet. And an instant force of 300 pixels per second. Uh, let's see what that looks like. Okay, I put the uh, draggable behavior on this planet so I can pull it away and to escape this uh, monster chasing it. Um, you might recognize this method. This is actually very similar to how Vampire Survivors works. The monsters are just dumb and just go straight towards the object. And you can kind of use that to your advantage to, to escape it. Um, so one of the downsides of this is it's very like mechanical. Like they're basically just robotics heading straight towards it. They're going a single speed the whole time. They don't slow down or speed up. And if I let them catch up to the Earth... I don't know if you can see that in the video, but the uh, object is jittering back and forth, shaking back and forth. It's because it's heading towards the Earth, and then it actually, in one frame, it goes past the Earth, and so then it has to head back towards the Earth. Of course, it's going to overshoot each time, and so it's overshooting back and forth. Um, so we need to find some way to stop that, which is not too hard to do. I'll show you in my next example. We'll disable this one and enable this one. All right, we're creating the object, the slow monster, and the um, we're giving the slow monster a, a variable called movement speed, uh, set to 300 pixels, and we're going to create the Earth again. Now, this is the part that changes. I'll leave this open so you can see the difference. So, so there's no conditions so here. Now we're going to make a condition so that the uh, the move movement will only happen when the distance between the Earth and the monster is below or i guess this this is the inversion uh, when it's when it's greater than the uh, movement speed times uh, this expression called time delta now time delta is the time elapsed since the last frame rendered on the screen so that this basically is what's going to prevent the earth from uh, jittering and let's see what that looks like okay once it gets close to the planet it decides that or the distance between the monster and the, and the planet is less than the speed it would travel in one frame. So we have solved the overshooting problem. Well, let's try uh, what happens if we add multiple monsters. Okay, so in this uh, example, I'm using a repeat repeated event. I'm going to repeat five times. I'll create the slow monster at a random position. Uh, it's basically from the center of the screen, plus or minus 400 pixels. And we are using that same movement speed variable. The only thing that's different is it really is that we have uh, five monsters now. That kind of worked. They start out, you know, separate. Um, but then as they chase the same object, they start to converge. And eventually they look like a single object again. So how can we fix that? Okay, so we're doing the same thing. We're creating five monsters, giving them a movement speed of 300. And we're only moving them when the distance is um, greater than this, the amount they would travel in one frame. Here's the one thing that's different. We're using this action called uh, move slow monster away from slow monster, only slow monster will move. I think this is also called separate objects in gdevelop. Uh, moves an object away from another using the collision masks. So let's see what this looks like in the game. There they go. And they they decided they're not overlapping anymore. So that's kind of cool. That works pretty well. They're still using the same dumb logic of moving uh, straight towards the object. They have no momentum. They always go the same speed. 
So this would work. This is this is right here is exactly how uh, vampire vampire survivors works, and it's a pretty fun mechanic if that's what you're going for. But I'm going to show you something that's a little more natural and more flexible than this method. Okay, this so-called secret method. What are we doing? Okay, we are going to be using something called Boyd's. Let me tell you a little bit about Boyd's. Okay, uh, so Boyd's is a really neat algorithm for simulating flocking movement of animals. There are three values that determine how these objects will move. So there's the separation force. This is basically moving objects moving away from each other. The alignment force means that the objects will tend to move in the same direction as their nearby objects. And then cohesion, this is the force that pulls objects together. If you think of sheep, sheep like to flock together and they, they're safer if they stay together as a group. So that's the cohesion force that's going to pull them together. So let's look at that in a game. I actually made an example game. So this is a game I made on GDevelop. It's hosted on GD Games. I'll post a link in the description. What I've set up here is a simulation where each of these objects that you see have the Boyd behavior, which GDevelop provides. And you can tweak its values. For instance, if you see the cohesion, separation, and alignment values, uh, the weight determines how strongly they're going to um, try to do that part of their decision. If I increase the cohesion, they'll start to pull together and overlap. The reason they're overlapping is because the cohesion is now stronger than the separation. So typically you don't want that. You want the cohesion less than your separation. Let's start with some fresh objects. They can have different um, distances. So when the objects are close, like 25 pixels apart, separation will only uh, take effect at that point. Uh, cohesion happens anytime they're within 50 pixels of each other. So uh, 50 pixels is what uh, determines how they, they clump together. And then of course alignment is the way they want to um, head in the same direction as people nearby. So you can tweak all these values and get quite a huge variety of movement. Like you can simulate birds, sheep, fish, bees, and you can also set these acceleration values. With just these these sliders, you can simulate a huge amount of uh, different types of monsters. Okay, so the first thing we will do is the we're going to make the Boyd's uh, move towards the planet. So how do we do that? Well, the most important thing to know is that this uh, this one here, this, I have two. This slow monster with Boyd's, what I've done is I've given it this behavior called Boyd's movement. You can get to it by clicking the add behavior button here and searching for Boyd's. And you can see this one's already added. Um, once it is added, you have these values. These are the same values that you saw in my uh, simulation. You can change the, uh, the weights of the decisions. Um, I've set the separation really high because I, I want to try to prevent them from overlapping. Um, they have a maximum speed and a maximum acceleration. Uh, I have rotation disabled because I don't want my monsters slipping around. In the flocking example I, I posted on GD Games, that one does have a rotation. So you can see their arrows pointing the direction they want to go. Um, and here's the, where you set their sights. Obviously, separation is the smallest. And this is what pulls them together and, and alignment. All right. Let's see how this works in the game. Um, all I am doing is creating one monster, one earth, and then the single action. Monster with Boyd's intends to move towards the earth-like planet. And I give a decision weight of 10. Let's see what this looks like. Heading towards it, and it does overshoot it. Uh, that's because, like I talked about, it's got really high maximum speed and the acceleration is, is half. Uh, but this could be kind of fun because you can almost act like it's a like a rampaging bull. If you wanted to make a game where you were like a bullfighter or something and you had to make something run towards you, maybe you wanted to run to this wall back here. See, it, you could do a game like that. Um, so this is kind of more natural where like something that's moving fast isn't going to instantly change direction. It has to, you know, fight its momentum and slow down. It can't just immediately turn dire turn directions. Um, so yeah, this is this is how easy it is to use Boyd's with just a single object. But let's see what else it can do. Okay, in this one, uh, we're going to create the Earth in the center, and then we're, five times we're going to create these monsters with Boyd's. I'm actually using this thing called the movement area. You would, didn't see it because it's hidden. Um, I created a layer called hidden objects, 
and basically it has this movement area on it. So the objects are going to be created within the boundaries of this red box. But I'm going to leave it hidden because it's mainly just a helper object. So I'm going to change their maximum speed and their acceleration to be 400 and 400. And they'll move a little slightly different than the one that we saw before. So here they are. They're trying to get to the Earth. At the same time, they're trying to separate from each other. And they also have some cohesion and alignment um, weights as well. So you can think of this as a, a pack of wolves or any kind of a monster that's trying to catch you. And you have to try to, to dodge them. We're actually going to simulate what I'm doing in um, Save the Earth. So what I do is uh, let's create these, create the Earth, create five monsters, change their speed and acceleration, and we give them a target X and Y. Uh, so each monster will get their own target X and Y. And so what is it? It's a random value between the, the left and right and the top and the bottom. So it basically stays within that movement area. That's where that's why I call it the movement area is because that's the where the target of where they want to go, and then I do it initially when they first create them, and then every three seconds after that I set a new one. So this is a really cool uh, condition you can use. This is actually a extension called repeat every x seconds. So this is what you use to get this condition. I use it in almost all my games, and so every three seconds this is going to happen. It's going to pick a new tar x and y target for these monsters. Now the Really, only thing else that happens is I tell the monsters to move towards their target. This is how you specify a variable of an object. So this is the object, and this is the variable. It's very similar to what we did before, except for every monster is going to be moving to a different location. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, this is very similar to Save the Earth. The funny thing to think I thought about when I made this method is the monsters aren't actually hitting the Earth on purpose. They're not being aggressive or, you know, mean or, you know, they don't want to murder humans. They just want to fly around and they just happen to hit the earth. So that kind of reminds me a little bit of um, Ender's Game because, you know, we assume the monsters are, you know, enemies and, and need to be destroyed. But maybe they're just wandering around and accidentally hitting the earth. All right, back to game dev. Okay, for the final example, I'm going to show you. Um, how you can use voids with um, avoiding things. So in this example, um, we're going to create the five monsters, and we're going to make them um, chase a uh, the moving target. But notice how I have the intent to move towards the target, decision wave 20. And then I also tell the, the monsters to avoid a radius of 96 pixels around the Earth. So in this case, they're going to do their best to avoid the Earth. These are friendly monsters that are trying to not run into the not run to the earth. In fact, they gave it a weight of 100, so they should try their best to, to not hit it. Let's see what this looks like. Oh yeah, I, I created uh, five Earths also. They have the antenna move towards this uh, green object, and of course they're trying to avoid these Earths. Let's see how they avoid it. They're doing pretty well. They have to calculate their combined force of avoiding the Earths, heading towards the target, separating from each other, their cohesion force, and then their alignment force. As you can see, you can create an enormous amount of types of um, AI movement in, in, for, for the objects in your game. And how hard was it? There was no coding involved. And how many events? It's just, it's just like a single event. So. I hope you play around with Boyd's. I hope you try it and um, come up with really cool things. Be sure to uh, send them to me. I love to see what you guys create.